What's up everybody, finally back at it with some Dragonflight beta content. This time we're taking a look at the shiny new and improved survival hunter. Anyways, I'll be going over what's been added, what's been gutted, and my overall thoughts on the new talent trees. Keep in mind this is beta-ish testing, so a lot of things can change. And a lot of this will be my personal opinion and ideas. So let's get into it! Starting with the class tree portion and the funner damage talent. Now there's quite a few new talents here and some borrowed talents from Beast Mastery as well as Marksman, like Killer Instinct which adds an execute component to your kill commands. 50% increased damage on targets below 35%, which might synergize well with a lot of our kill command resetting talents. It does however share a place with Alpha Predator which makes it a lot less appealing. Having an extra charge on KC makes your rotation feel a lot better. And Explosive Shot will also be available for survival hunters, nothing new about how it works button, target goes boom, great for burst AoE and it's easily obtainable in the current talent tree for when you might need it. Then there's Stampede, pet lovers rejoice, throw a herd of animals at your targets dealing a ton of damage to enemies hit and increases your critical chance against them by 10%. Sadly they still march in a line so it requires a bit of aiming but pending tuning could be a very nice addition for some on demand burst AoE, combined with our already insane new AoE toolkit. Or or you could take Death Chakram here which is our returning Covenant power, sadly without the Covenant legendary power attached to it which made it apply explosive shot to targets hit. Current iteration however deals a decent amount of damage on AoE and targets hit take 10% more damage from you and your pet. So you can use this and then unload your other AoE abilities into that damage increase window. So you can either rock stampede for when you need a really big AoE CD like during intermission on Anduin and Sepulchre, swarms of add and big damage damage increase, whereas a fight like Artificer or Soul Render where you get smaller ad packs more frequently, you'd go for Chakrams or Explosive Shot. Moving on, we now have Serpent Sting in our class tree, so for all Hunter specs, and the amazing upgrades to it which is Latent Poison Injectors or Hydra's Bite. Now Latent Poison Injector, Serpent Sting's damage applies Latent Poison to the target stacking up to 10 times, Raptor Strike consumes all stacks, dealing increasing nature damage per stack consumed. And Hydra's Bite Serpent Sting hits two additional targets, nothing new, and deals 20% increased damage. But no longer do we have to choose between Hydra's Bite and Guerrilla Tactics. Rejoice! And this gives us the choice between being able to quickly spread Serpent Sting on big packs of mobs with Hydra's Bite, or more sustained low target cleave with Latent Poison. On a fight like Lords of Dread and Sepulchre, where you always have at least two targets, you'd smack away at one of them whilst keeping Serpent Sting on both, and swapping target for a cheeky Raptor Strike when the other boss has 10 stacks of the poison. All in all, I really like these talents. Now, to further boost this, you can spec into Serrated Shots, 2 point talent, increases Serpent Sting and bleed damage done by 10 to 20%, then 40% if the target is below 30% health. And it synergizes well with the new-ish talent, Master Marksman 2 talent point, whenever you crit with a range or melee special attack, so anything but dots and white hits, the target will bleed for 15% of that crit's damage done, which adds up pretty darn fast. And it also synergizes well with some of our other talents in the serve tree that gives us bleeds, which I'll go over in a bit. Other than that, there's Nessingware's Trapping Apparatus, which is a reworked version of the Shadowlands Legendary. Anytime you successfully freezing trap an enemy, gain 20 focus and increase focus gain by 50% for 5 seconds. The big issue here is in the wording. Whenever you successfully freezing trap, meaning it won't work on a lot of mobs or bosses as it is currently, and it doesn't work off of high explosive trap nor steel trap. However, if it's reworked a bit to always work or work with multiple traps, that'd be great. I still dislike throwing traps mid-rotation, but hey, it's better. Being able to proc it off something like steel trap would make a lot more sense and would make it into a pseudo cooldown of sorts, and would fit into our toolkit a lot better for some mongoose bite spamming. And you're currently forced to take it to get to steel trap, so if we end up using that, we're forced to take a potentially dead talent which is not awesome. Then there's the Arctic Bola. Whenever you Raptor Strike you have a chance to throw a Bola at your target that deals a bit of damage, slows him by 20% and bounces to two additional targets. While testing even with a very very Raptory or Mongoose Strikey approach, th th this did next to nothing. So it's at the mercy of tuning. Overall it's a fun concept, if tuned properly it could give us some extra passive cleave even with a very single target oriented build. Probably not, but that eh, one can dream. Now 
Now, as far as the rest of the talent tree goes, it's just filled with different utility-based talents and defensives. So you'll find new things like Hunter's Agility, Agile Movement, and High Explosive Trap. Hunter's Agility gives you 6% damage reduction against AoE attacks, and as a squishy hunter, hey, I'll take it. Agile Movement gives you 3% movement speed up to 6%. I love movement speed, but it's not really like we need it, even after losing Soul Shape. And then there's High Explosive Trap used to be a PvP only talent but has now been given to all hunters. Deals a tiny bit of damage and knocks away all enemies near. You can also use it to properly mess up a pull and annoy the living hell out of randoms and pugs. Imagine, if you will, a massive dungeon pull. Your fellow DPSers have saved their cooldowns just for this moment. Your Destro Lock pops a rain of fire. The Elemental Shaman slaps off the nastiest earthquake you've ever seen. You smile and you knock them all away from the AoEs. Cause your cooldowns were not up for that poll. For more pro hunter tips, make sure to subscribe to my Patreon. Following this, we have some returning talents and reworked stuff. Our Shadowlands Conduit, Rejuvenating Wind, which adds a hot component to your acceleration. And Survival of the Fittest is no longer tied to our pet. SCORE! It's now a class talent and can be further upgrade to either reduce damage taken by an additional 20%, so 40%, or a 30 sec less cooldown and last 2 seconds longer. This is overall fantastic. Not only do we now have a defensive CD that isn't tied to our pet and we can choose depending on content if we want a stronger defensive or a longer lasting defensive with shorter cooldown. And on top of this, Tenacity pets now get a 20% increased max health cooldown to it and the hunter instead of survival of the fittest. So hey, more defensives. The tie in with this born to be wild now reduces the cooldown of survival of the fittest as well as cheetah turtle. So if you spec into the CDR as well as born to be wild, you can get survival of the fittest down to two minutes. There's there's also a new talent that's not fully implemented yet as they're working on it, which is Sentinel and its upgrade, Sentinel's Perception and Wisdom. Sentinel, which is the new resonating arrow, and like I said, it's currently not yet implemented, so all of this might be removed and replaced by another talent. You call forth a Sentinel Owl to target a location, your attacks ignore line of sight in this area, and every 200 focus spent grants you one second of Sentinel when you cast it, up to maximum 12 seconds. Now the upgrade's Perception makes it so that all parts party members ignore line of sight in that area, and Wisdom, your party takes 10% reduced nature damage, and it removes one poison and disease effect from a party member every second. Now as for the line of sight portion of this, it has some niche uses. When it's useful, it's really good, but more often than not, you will get very little value from this in a PvE setting. But imagine a fight like Jailer Phase 1, or if you did a Shara in Eternal Palace, being able to cast out of line of sight would be awesome for certain overlaps, but for most fights, it's just a dead talent. Now, giving it to the entire party, on the other hand, changes absolutely nothing. Unless they make all new dungeons and raids with tons of LOS mechanics, in which case, go go hunters. Now, the 10% less nature damage taken and cleanse effect, however, can have a lot of uses in PvE, most noticeably in M+, as having a party-wide cleanse can make a lot of things a ton easier. Think last boss in Plaguefall on Tyrannical, pop this bad boy and cleanse away during infectious rain. Overall, I personally really really like this tree, it could use some love in some places, like Nessing where he's trapping, but overall there's choices to be made depending on encounter, content as well as build. The only big issue I have with it is something a lot of hunters have raised as a concern, which is the lack of a proper raid utility. Even if Sentinel is implanted as is, that line of sight skipping won't exactly give us a raid spot unless most fights in a raid have LOS mechanics, which I highly doubt. Melee is always going to be extremely contested so if you're not topping the meters by miles or have an extremely good DPS toolkit to deal with certain fights, well then you better bring something else worthwhile and currently we lack that. Everything we bring can be brought by someone else, except the sentinel thingy, which could be brought by other hunters so you don't have to have a melee for that either. So either give Surf some raid utility or just make him miles ahead of damage. Either works. Now with that out of the way, let's break down the survival talents. So what's new here? Well, there's a lot and most of it is pretty dang good. Starting off with some new or reworked cooldowns we can talent into. Coordinated Assault has been reworked and can be upgraded with two additional talents, Coordinated Kill and Birds of Prey or Bombardier. Bombardier? Coordinated Assault lasts for 30 seconds, you and your pet charge your enemy dealing a bit of damage and your pet's basic attacks empower your next wildfire bomb or kill shot. Wildfire bomb's initial damage is increased by 20% and kill shot makes the target 
it bleed for 50% of its damage over 6 seconds. Here, <laughs> more bleed to pair with serrated shots execute. And coordinated kill, 2 point talent. While coordinated assault is active, the cooldown of wildfire bomb is reduced by 25 to 50%. Wildfire bomb also generates 5 to 10 focus when thrown, and kill shots cooldown is reduced by up to 50% and can be used against any target regardless of HP. And the capstone, if you will, birds of prey or bombardier. Sounds wrong. Birds of prey, kill shot strikes up to three additional targets while coordinated assault is active, or bombardier wildfire bombs cooldown is reset at the start and end of CA. So you'll either go for kill shot cleave for cleave fights or wildfire bomb reset for single target or heavy heavy AoE where extra bombs are always nice. Imagine being able to cleave kill shot on a fight like storm lead in general where most of the time when you have cooldown there's at least four targets up. And remember 50% of that kill shot damage will become a bleed on them. So lots of potential for those types of fights. Overall the reworked coordinated assault is hella fun to play with however it really ramps up when you upgrade it with coordinated kill as that's what allows you to use kill shot regardless of HP giving CA a lot more value as well as turning wildfire bomb into a generator rather than a spender. Regardless it's a nice change. But wait there's so many more cooldowns we have fury of the eagle and spearhead. Fury of the eagle is the returning legion artifact power that's been reworked a bit. 45 second cooldown deals damage to all enemies in front of you or his channel and its critical strike chance is increased by 50% against targets below 20%. On top of this kill command resets reduce the cooldown of fury of the eagle by 3 seconds giving us even more interaction with our KC resets which is very much the theme for the rework. Regardless I really like it. And if you upgrade this with the 3 point talent ruthless marauder it now gains critical strike chance against targets below 35, 50 or 65 percent depending on points invested. However on top of the 50 percent increased crit chance against higher HP threshold targets crits with fury of the eagle reduces wildfire bomb by 0.5 seconds per point spent up to 1.5 seconds. Even on one target you'll get back at least one bomb during this and on AoE it's absolutely insane. It itself does insane damage when you're under the 65 percent health threshold but you also get a full stack of bombs back. So you'll be able to double bomb into fury into double bomb for some insane burst and if you're ever in a pseudo cleave fight where it only has some aoe it will still have a lot of value on single target chaining kc resets to lower cdr and anytime you press it you'll get a wildfire bomb back when the boss is under 65 percent that being said it's true power is on aoe but it isn't dead on single target and on the other side we have spearhead 1.5 minute cooldown you and your pet charge the enemy slapping them you then become one with your pet. Last for 12 seconds, your pet deals 25% more damage and raptor strike slash mongoose bite deals an additional 35% over 4 seconds as a bleed. More bleeds! And KC has 20% increased chance to reset. More resets! This by itself is just a slap button slap harder kind of thing, synergizes extremely well with mongoose bite spam, getting those 5 stacked mongoose slaps with 35% additional damage as bleed, and then even more bleed damage from serrated shots you can get some really juicy bleeds off of this. The KC resets can be nice for mongoose spamming but more often than not you only want to spam mongoose during those windows but even so extra resets are nice. Synergizes with a lot of our other talents and works well for a non mongoose spam build as well. However the real juicy goosey comes when you upgrade it with deadly duo two point talent. While spearhead is active the focus cost of raptor strike and mongoose bite is reduced by five and kill command resets extend the duration of spearhead by up to 1.5 sec per reset. Now reduced raptor strike mongoose bite cost is great, really helps sustain that raptor mongoosey spam. The KC reset extend is a bit counterintuitive to how mongoose builds usually play, but like I said there's a ton of talents that synergizes with kill command resets, even a talent called bloody claw which increases your chance for kill command resets by up to 4% per stack of mongoose bite. So an additional 20% combined with spearhead while you get a lot of resets to extend spearhead with. So with these CDs the clear path for serve tree right now is do you want more AoE or do you want to do more single target or some kind of weird mixed bag between both of them and it's fairly mapped out as such on the tree. Moving on we have a few new 
fun talents as well. Intense focus, kill command generates 6 additional focus. Might not sound exciting, but it really makes a ton of difference on the amount of raptor mongoose spam you can dish out, especially with all the increases to KC resets. On that topic, we have quick shots. When kill command resets, you have 30% chance to fire an arcane shot at your target. At 100% normal value, I assume damage. Again, more KC reset interaction. Probably won't change your rotation or it. Hopefully it will not. Don't want to end up in a only spam KC to proc this scenario even if you're focus capped. But it's a nice boost regardless. Viper's Venom 2 point talent, Raptor Strike and Mongoose Bite have a 15-30% to 30 chance to slap a Serpent Sting on your target. This talent is a bit weird for a few reasons, biggest one being that if you've specced into Serpent Sting, it's pretty much a dead talent. And you have to spec into it in order to spec into Wildfire Infusion, which you kinda do want. So the biggest reason to spec into this is cause you have to. It could have been a thing for mongoose builds to not spec into Serpent Sting and take this instead. However, it requires heavy investment in the opposite side of the talent tree for a mongoose build, so you'd lose out on a lot of things that increases your kill shot, kill command, mongoose damage. But hey, at least you don't have to press Serpent Sting every 15 seconds. That'd be super bad. So yeah, it's in a bit of a funky spot in my opinion. Not good when you have to take it and too much investment when you might need it. Now on the topic of Wildfire Infusion. Volatile Bomb, the green bomb, now also applies Serpent Sting to up to 3 targets, rather than refresh Serpent Stings. I personally like the new one more, feels better to go into a new pack with a green bomb and just chuck it, rather than feeling like, ah, I need to get some Serpent Stings up first. Bomb away. And lunch is back on the menu, which is probably, hands down, the best talent, the most overpowered talent in the entire tree. 3 yard increased range on all your melee abilities. This is just beyond broken. If you've ever played Rogue, you'll know being able to stand a lot further back clears up so, so much, makes dodging tons easier and can even avoid a ton of melee mechanics without losing any uptime. It might not give us any flat damage on paper, but boy oh boy will it be a DPS increase. You can now also spec into Carve or Butchery and upgrade them with Frenzy Strikes to get the Wildfire Bomb cooldown reduction on it, which then gives Carve and Butchery a 1 second CDR per target hit on wildfire bombs and a 1.56 CDR on flanking strike now. Currently, butchery looks a lot more appealing than carb, having a charge system for it makes it a lot easier to use and more fun, as you can more or less on demand spam it when you need extra burst damage on AoE, and with frenzy strikes you also can get a ton of on demand CDR for your bombs on AoE. Carb on the other hand has a shorter cooldown, so for sustained AoE it might be better to get that constant flow of wildfire CDR, but also, I mean look at butchery animation. I mean, look at that spinning swirl of death. Beautiful. That being said, we'll probably skip these entirely on single targets fight and might only take butchery and skip frenzy strike for some encounters where you need burst AoE, but an extra bomb won't make a huge difference per burst cycle, if you will. Again, choices. Great stuff. Then there's a whole bunch of boring increased damage by X or Y. I mean, they're good, they make sense, they're just not fun. Except this one, a new talent called Ranger. Kill shot, Serpent Sting, Arcan shot, and Explosive Shot deals 20% increased damage. Again, I envision a cleave build where you have Hydra's Bite for Serpent Sting spread, fully upgraded coordinated assault with Birds of Prey for kill shot bleed and for 4 target cleave, then combine it with Serrated Shots, Rangers and Mar Master Marksmen. Screw everything, we're a dot class now, there will be bleeds on everything and Serpent Stings. Ah, but I digress. Then there's Spear Focus, increases Mongoose damage by up to 10%, kill companion up to 10% kill command damage, tactical advantage up to 20% flanking strike and 8% wildfire bomb damage, improved wildfire bomb up to 25% damage increase, ferocity pet damage increased by 10%, and my personal favorite out of the bunch, sharp edges, crit damage is increased by 2% per point, up to a maximum of 4%, now that's what I call impactful. <laughs> put two points in this and you really feel a difference. Arr! Lastly, you have standard talents like Gorilla Tactics, Tip of the Spear, Blood Seeker, Flanking Strike, etc. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the talent tree. Overall, I was extremely pleasantly surprised over the serve tree. Very few talents contest with each other for different possible builds. It's mapped out very well, so everything AoE oriented is more on the left side and Mongoose single target talents are on the right side. And talents that are beneficial for both are more centered, so there's 
there's very few moments where you go, ah, god dang it, I want this, but I can't. And overall, combining it with our hunter class tree, there's a lot of different possible builds that you can make depending on what content you'll be doing or what certain encounters might need. Need more cleave? You can build for that. Need more heavy burst AoE or on-demand burst AoE? You can build for that. Need pure single target? Easy to fix. List goes on. Point being, it looks incredible and from what I've tested, it feels great playing and swapping between different builds and the rotation overall feels a lot fresher. The only thing I'm really sad about is seeing the current four set go. Was it overpowered? Yes. Was it super fun to play with? Oh my god, yes. Not necessarily because of the damage output, not necessarily not, but it was more the playstyle that I enjoyed with a lot of KC resets and fishing bomb resets. But I digress. In the end, there will most likely be one or two cookie cutter builds that'll work for most content, but for players that want to minimax, there's the possibility to do so. Sure, there's some talent bloat, some boring talents that should be baseline, but it looks very interesting as of testing it. And I hope it stays that way with more improvements to come. Just the fact that we have more possibilities, more stuff to press, as well as a better defensive toolkit that we can tailor to our needs makes me hyped. Hopefully they manage to tune all of this so it doesn't end up as a illusion of choice, because personally, Personally, I love minimaxing even when it's not super needed, but swapping talents, builds, gear, etc. depending on fights and encounter, it feels fun and it feels rewarding, even if it's a minor gain at best. And in the case of these talent trees, you can swap it up quite a bit, just as long as the tuning ends up in a good spot. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the new revamped talent trees for survival hunters. I'll go over marksmen in a future video as well as other classes. Hello! Let me know in the comments what you think of the new talent tree anything you're hyped over or dislike let me know don't forget the usual stuff like comment subscribe and ring that notification bell it really helps me out i stream progression and testing on twitch stanky gaming mostly thursdays and sundays for the raids don't forget to check out my patreon if you want to help support me my work and my goal of upgrading my computer before dragonflight and make sure to check out the liquid women in warcraft discord if you're looking for a supportive and safe warcraft community there's a link to it in the description below. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.